Hi and welcome back. You have reached the uh, third part of the tutorial um, and uh, I have some good news. The good news is that we're actually going to do something useful here. So we're going to start calculating network measures. Uh, in this case um, the average smoking among friends. So we had a research question. Do social networks affect the frequency of smoking among pupils in uh, secondary school? And one idea could be um, that uh, friends influence each other, so that uh, my likelihood of smoking is greater when I have uh, friends who smoke. So uh, a, a possible hypothesis would be the frequency with which a pupil smokes is positively correlated to the frequency of smoking among his or her friends. Um, so what we uh, what we want is. Uh, uh, something like is smoking among friends or average smoking among friends variable because then we could correlate that with the smoking of the individual uh, but we do not have that information or well we have it but not stored in the right way so it's currently not in the row of the uh, respondent um, so I'll show you that but before I do that I'll show you what the smoking variable looks like so this is that uh, question it was, the question was um, have you smoked in the last three months uh, and then answer categor categories range from one never to five more than ten times okay so but the, the the problem is that uh, if you take a look here in the second data set, the, the ties data set, we have a smoking uh, variable, actsmokd, but that's the, the, the smoking of the ID person, of the ego, and not the smoking of the alter, the friend. So what we uh, would like to have is a, a similar variable here, for example, that uh, gives the smoking of the friend also in the same row um, and we can uh, we can do that uh, using syntax um, and we need the match files command again to do that so um, there, there are uh, two basic ways to use the match files uh, but, uh, apart from the uh, the, the kind of things I used it for earlier which is not really what is was designed for uh, this command so two uh, basic ways uh, the first one is if you have two data sets with the same cases in the rows so every row is one case and that's the same thing in both data sets then you can use match files in combination with multiple slash file equals subcommands so for example here the current file and some kind of file you, you have on the disk. But alternatively, and I'm going to use that one here, you can specify a uh, slash table equals subcommand. And um, SPSS wants that kind of a specification when you have data sets that con contain multiple combinations. So I'll show you what that means. Um, mm -hmm here so the thing is that um, um, so I, I wanna look up these friends I have over here in this data set that's because the, the, the friends here are exactly the same persons as the egos here we, we exampled the full uh, networks and um, the egos here have a, a smoking uh, variable you, you cannot see it here unfortunately but it's in the data uh, so we, we will lo look these people up in that data set basically but as you can see um, if you go down the line a little bit so for example this person here uh, 110 is uh, actually mentioned multiple times so it's also here 110 and and here is another one so um, that person was uh, mentioned as a friend by more than one person so we look want to look this person up three times actually over here 
So in that sense, it's not a one-on-one -on -one match, but uh, well, in this case, a three-on-one match. And then you use that specification with a t slash table equals so the, the one below here. Um, and here you can see why identification variables are so important because all match files commands need a slash by subcommand where you give the ID variable because you're matching or merging multiple files you really really want to make sure that the information ends up in the right place so that is in the right row with with, uh, with the right respondent and uh, that's why you always need um, identification variable which which um, needs to have the same name in both data sets and of course also the same values and uh, before you can run any uh, match files, you always need to make sure that your cases are sorted. <coughs> so that you, you, your cases need to be sorted on the same ID variables as you want to use for the match files. Alright, so let's try to do that. So I um, uh, start again where I left off at the second part. So I have this... Um, uh, ties as cases data set and I have the smoking for the individual here um, uh, so I'm first I'll list the cases as I just told you and now I'll, I'll use this match files command so have so let's have a look at what's in it so I start by saying okay um, um, I need the current um, the current file as one of the as one of the files I want to merge or match and then I use this slash table equals subcommand. So look up uh, the values, the values I specify at the with the by subcommand. So the, the values of friend in this case, and look them up in the file tutorial dot which is the one I saved earlier. Um, and then uh, imp uh, what SPSS does is uh, it basically imports all the uh, all the variables that are in the tutorial staff unless you specify to keep uh, subcommand so I did that and I say okay I wanna keep the identification variables the smoking of the uh, ego the the index and uh, and the, the friend and alter smoke variables um, okay so that is what we already discussed uh, there's one more thing though um, and that's that there is a, that there is a little problem here and you can see that if you look at this uh, slide so what we're doing is we're trying to f we're trying to find these people with these uh, identification uh, numbers and we're looking we're looking them up uh, over here in this data set and they're identified here with the ID variable but those are two different well, they're, they're, they contain the same information, but they have different names. So the names of these two variables are different. Here it's friend, and over here it's ID. So that's something um, uh, SPSS cannot handle normally, unless you specify rename, the rename subcommand. So that's what I did here, and I'm saying, okay, so the, the uh, variable ID in the tutorial SAF data needs to be renamed to friend and then I have two identification variables called friend with the same value so then it should work and I'm also renaming another variable that's the smoking uh, frequency uh, because otherwise when SPSS merges the files it will have two uh, variables with the same name which will not work because they contain uh, different information. That's why I say, okay, the uh, act smoke in the tutorial staff, I want to rename that to alter smoke. Okay, let's see whether it works. And it did. So, um, a alter smoke variables appears here in the last column, and it um, seems to have quite nicely the uh, information we want attached to it. Uh, sometimes it's missing, but that's because um, uh, not uh, all pupils participated in the survey, a few uh, didn't, 
but they could still be mentioned as friends by the egos. So 106 mentioned 104 as a friend, but he or she did not participate in the survey, and that's why we don't have the information about smoking. All right, so far so good. But as I told you, we're not going to use um, this uh, data set for our analysis. We're going to use uh, the simple individuals as cases data set. So we need a way to convert this format back to the original format. And I already told you that that, was the f that is accomplished by the cases to vars command. So exactly the opposite of what we had, the vars to cases. Um, and the specification is not uh, very complicated. I need uh, your ID variable, uh, which you specify by the slash ID equals, and your um, index variable, specified by the slash index equals variable. So I uh, did that. Well, first of all, I sort the cases back to the back in the original uh, sequence, and then I can. Where is it? Here. Use that cases to vars uh, command. So b basically, what we're asking SPSS is um, so we have an index variable i here, which ranges from 1 to 12 in our case. So SPSS sees that and uh, converts all the variables except the identification variable. Uh, to the different format and then uh, multiple times, as many times as there are values for the index variable. So in, in our case, it will make 12 friend variables, friend one, friend two, friend three, etc., and also 12 act smoke variables. So let's run the cases to vars. Yes. Okay, so we have individuals uh, in the rows again. Very good. We have smoking. We have 12 friend variables. And uh, note that uh, the name of the variables is uh, slightly different from what it was in the original data set. And we have, more importantly, the alter smoke variables, ranging from 1 to 12, of course. And uh, as you can see, there are two values here for the first and the second alter, and then a missing value for the third one. And that's correct, because uh, this person only mentioned two friends. Right, so um, we need to do a few other things still. And the first one is to re-include people without friends. So uh, as I told earlier, um, if you make such a dice as cases data set, it means that people without dice simply drop out. Yeah, so you need to keep that in mind. Uh, so we're going back to the in, uh, individual level data set and now we want to re-include people with no friends, without uh, dice. Uh, and I can do that simply by uh, using match files again. Uh, simply match the current file with the one on disk and then that is done by ID, of course, to make sure that the information ends up in the right row. Um, and what this will do is, in fact, two things. Um, first, it will import all the variables in the tutorial sav that are not in the current data set, because I didn't specify a key subcommand, of a keep subcommand here. And the second thing is that it will import the, the cases that are not in this uh, file, but uh, are in this file. So that's exactly what we want. So let's run this. And let's have a look. No errors. Um, let's have a look whether it worked. Yes, it did. So here um, are all the variables from the original data set again. That's one. And two is, well, if you have a look at this case over here, it seems that also the uh, the people without friendship ties are re-included again. Very good. Um, and what SPSS also did, I mean, it's probably the most convenient 
if I show you that here. So it, it's created these 12 friend variables from the uh, uh, ties data. But it now it also re ah here they are. It also re-included the uh, original friend variables because they have a different name. So SP says thinks that they are different variables. But in fact, they should contain exactly the same information. These are uh, these variables. So uh, that's actually a, a nice uh, trick we can use here, because if something went wrong along the way. For example, in the in the match files, if the certain information ended up in the wrong place, then we should be able to see that uh, here. So one possible check um, to see if uh, things went right is the following one, and that's look at the correlation between those two friend variables, the one created and uh, the original one. And of course, that correlation should be exactly right, one. Okay, so that looks just fine. Um, and well, that means that we're uh, done with the uh, all of the annoying data transformations over here. We finally have the uh, smoking variables we wanted in the right rows. So the smoking of the friends is now connected to the smoking of the individual and the other individual characteristics. So that means we can basically just proceed as we're used to by running analyses or building scales or whatever we want to do. Um, so what I did here is, well, I com computed average smoking among these uh, friends. So I, w I, I took the mean of these 12 uh, alter smoke variables you can do anything here, uh, of course. So look at the number of people that smoke, or whether at least one person smokes, yes or no, or the maximum smoking in the network, etc., etc. Whatever is the best uh, test of your theory. So I computed the average smoke smoking and um, rearranged the variables a little bit. So if you look here, you see. The um, smoking of the ego, you see the smoking of the altars, and here is the average smoking, and that looks quite good because an average of one and one among the altars is one, etc. Okay, so the key question is, of course, is there a correlation between smoking of ego and smoking of the network? So let's have a look. Uh, and there it is. Yes, yes, of, of course. And it's probably quite intuitive. Uh, there is a correlation, and in fact, it's quite a strong one. 0.33 is a strong, uh, strong effect, and positive, and and st and highly significant. So um, um, it. Uh, our uh, hypothesis is uh, supported. We uh, find a strong cor positive correlation between smoking of an individual and smoking uh, frequency of smoking among his or her friends. So now you know how to calculate a network measure. Um, in the last uh, part of the tutorial, we'll uh, also create a, a network measure, but it's one with slightly different issues connected. So stay tuned.